Right now, Washington Mornings on the Mall. And AM 630. 637 on WMAL, where Washington comes to talk. It's Brian Wilson, Brian Neiman. Larry O'Connor is in today from Breitbart TV, uh, helping us out today and offering some some pointed commentary about the, what was all the uh, topics we've been going through this morning. we got Eli Lake on the line, Senior National Security Reporter for Newsweek and the Daily Beast, and he's been on the cutting edge of the story about what happened in Benghazi. And as we dig into this story, Eli, more and more and more it's becoming more troubling because it appears the ambassador and many people at the Libyan mission and security officials that were on the ground there recognized just how serious the problem was. They kept saying, don't pull out security, add security, and yet they it seemed that they were largely ignored. Well, I think that's, uh, and it, we're looking to see a pattern that's probably going to emerge tomorrow at the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee hearings, where we're going to see the first two whistleblowers or uh, security officials coming forward. And I think what they're going to say is going to contradict or at least be very damaging to the State Department. That said, a lot of the information is still coming in, and I think we've got to like wait until we hear all the various perspectives, and I think this hearing is a good place to start. All right, now, it, the latest story you have has to do with the militias that were on the ground, that were Libyan militias there to defending the consulate, and uh, on the very day of the attack, they were sort of threatening to walk off the job. Is that correct? Well, the very day of the attack, uh, there was a, a table approved by Ambassador Chris Stevens that talked about a meeting two days before where two heads of the militias that were keeping order in the broader Benghazi area threatened to stand down if their candidate, uh, or rather the, or if the candidate they perceived the U.S. was backing, uh, ended up uh, ascending to the prime ministership. And that's uh, a fairly important angle, because when you cut back on American diplomatic security, you have to rely more and more on Libyan militias and Libyan uh, armed forces. And Libya really doesn't have a professional armed forces right now. Hey, Eli, Eli, I'm yeah. going to ask you to, to hang up and call back. We're having a little problem with your connection. Apparently, it's not very good. Would you do that for us? Yeah, sure. Of course. Oh, oh, no, no, now hey, you're there. Now bad. you're fine. Go ahead. Are you on Bluetooth or something? <laughs> Eli? Eli? Oh, he's, oh, he's, oh, he's, oh he's that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> you, told him you can blame me for that, the, the new kid. It's, yeah. it's my fault. You know what I wanted to ask Eli was, and I think this is a part of the emerging story, is uh, Ambassador Rice, Secretary of State Clinton, Jay Carney, the entire White House apparatus for two weeks, we've got them on video, uh, uh, denying that this was an al-Qaeda attack and blaming this 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 stupid YouTube video. That's got to come back and cause some damage, you would think, to, to the State Department and to the White House. Yeah, and the other thing that's coming out now, and and we've known this for a couple of days, I guess, is that they asked for more security, and the request was denied. Why was it denied? And not only was it denied, but apparently now, and, and Jason Chaffetz, uh, the congressman, Republican right. lawmaker, is saying not only was it denied, but they actually decreased the amount of security that was at the consulate. Yeah, right. So it's just like, what the heck is going on here? And I hope that's something that comes out of these hearings. Yeah, it's, as you and I have, have said before, they, they requested security, the quest denied. People die. Yeah. Eli Lake's back with us. Eli, all right, the question still remains. I don't know if you've got any new reporting on this, is as to why, when the requests were made for more security at the consulate, not only was it denied, and now we're hearing from Jason Chaffetz, the Republican congressman, that uh, the amount of security actually decreased. Well, I, th I think that's what we're going to find out in the hearing. Um, and I also feel that there were, there, 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 it looks like there was a, a, a difference of opinion based on the security officers who were on the ground in Libya and those who were higher up in the food chain, I guess, in Washington. But uh, we, I, I'm still kind of waiting to hear from all the different perspectives on this. But the key here is to look at the militias. Was there uh, a kind of internal or inside threat from the February 17 Martyr Brigade that was charged with protecting the outer perimeter security for the consulate? Uh, when we learn more about that, I've reported that there were problems there, although some of those uh, Libyans did fight in the assault, uh, you know, to protect the consulate. Uh, the second question is, when you decrease the Americans that are protecting the consulate, or for that matter, other uh, important diplomatic personnel in Libya, 
you rely more on militias, and everybody was relying on those militias. Did these militias press their advantage in some ways for political agendas that would have allowed other bad actors to have an advantage in that uh, horrific assault on the 11th anniversary of 9-11? Eli, I know the hearings are going to focus on, on the security issues and what happened and how the uh, attack occurred, but do you know, are they going to focus also on the uh, disinformation that we got, not just from the State Department, not just from the White House, from our own U.N. ambassador who went out and uh, flatly denied that this was uh, what was apparently and obviously at the time an al-Qaeda attack and continued to blame it, uh, the attack on this YouTube video. Are they going to delve into that aspect? I think you're going to see an element of that in the hearings because there's going to be a question as to whether or not anybody in Libya were predicting protests or uh, having to do with this Internet video. But I should say the administration's lie at this point is what Susan Rice said uh, some four days after the attacks was consistent with an intelligence community assessment as to what they knew at the time. There are lots of people who've talked to me from the intelligence community who say, that assessment that they're relying on was cherry-picked information. I, I'm ah. shocked that an administration would throw CIA under the bus and intelligence under the bus. That hardly ever happens, Eli. No, no one's going to believe that. Well, I <laughs> would say that when the Bush White House in 2004 and exactly. 2003 started to throw the CIA under the bus, the general media response at the time was that uh, you know the White House had a lot of questions that they had to answer, and they looked at the angle of politicized intelligence. At this point, I'm just trying to follow the facts, so I don't yeah, have if, if we, further we, information. We get that, but I mean, I think you'll agree with me that based on what we've seen over time here in Washington, if the CIA feels like it's getting thrown out of the bus, they won't stand by quietly and allow that I to think happen. That's a safe, I yeah. think that's a safe bet, but at this point, I have not seen indications from the official line of the CIA but they're backing away from that story at this point. All right, Eli, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Thanks very much. Thank you. Eli Lake, Senior National Security Reporter for Newsweek and the Daily Beast, 644 on.